When it comes to retirement, Florida and Arizona are often the glittering jewels of promise with their warm weather, endless golf courses, and the dream of never having to scrape ice off your windshield again. But let's face it, not everyone is cut out for a life of perpetual sunshine and shuffleboard. Some retirees are seeking adventure, cultural enrichment, or just something different from the stereotypical sunshine retirement. I'm one of them, not a big fan of too much sunshine. Today we look at some of those options with 10 great cities to retire in, none of which are in Florida or Arizona. Got it? Get it? Good. Let's take a look. Number 10, Fargo, North Dakota. That's right, I said Fargo, North Dakota. Put your teeth back in your mouth, Ethel. When you think of retirement, why not think of endless stretches of tundra and a population that treats parkas like formal wear? Yeah, that's what's going on in North Dakota. And Fargo is a very cold place in North Dakota. Forget about mild winters. Their weather makes men and sometimes freezes men to the front seat of their truck. But people still love Fargo for retirement. Why not? It's a great place with great health care and it's affordable. See, sunshine is great and all that, but some people can't afford Florida and Arizona for retirement. That draws a good amount of people to places like Fargo. Plus, the city's legendary friendliness means you'll always have someone to chat, whether you like it or not. Even though Fargo is cold and not as appealing as Florida and Arizona, a lot of people choose Fargo. Fargo for cost and some other stats. The livability score in Fargo is 84, which if you don't know about that, anything above 65 is okay. When you get above 75, it's great. This is 84. About 12.5% of Fargo's population is 65 or older. The national average is about 10. Fargo has approximately 10 to 15 retirement communities. Now there's a lot that goes into that one. Some close, some open, and different places have different reports on how many there are. But 10 to 15 good size retirement communities. The average home value here is $296,000. Number nine, St. George, Utah. St. George is a great place for someone that wants to live a nice, wholesome retirement, but occasionally want to go across the border to Nevada and do some gambling. St. George is about 40 minutes from Mesquite, Nevada. Along that route, you're going to have to cut a little corner of Arizona, and you'll go by things like the Virgin River and the Beaver Dam. I'm not kidding. They're right next to each other. And that's not too far away from where Thelma and Louise drove off that cliff in the movie. Yeah, you can go see where that is. St. George, though, is a great place to live. They have a livability score of 80. About 17.5% of St. George's population is 65 years or older. St. George has approximately 20 to 25 retirement communities, and the average home value is $509,000. Number eight, Anchorage, Alaska. If you are truly an adventurous retiree, Anchorage is calling you. Why settle for beach sunsets when you have an opportunity to see the northern lights? Sure, it's cold and you might be run over by a moose, but at least you don't have to worry about hurricanes. I'd rather come face to face with a moose instead of an alligator any day. Or one of many, many snakes they have in Arizona. Now, there are a lot of reasons to move to Alaska in retirement, especially if you like to fish. That's one of the biggest reasons, or just people that like to be outdoors. They also get a yearly stipend, which is nice just to live there. And they're pretty friendly when it comes to the different things about retirement in the state. They have a livability score of 78. About 8.4% of Anchorage's population is 65 years or older. They've got 10 to 15 retirement homes, and the average home value is about $375,000. There's a lot of other solid places for retirement in Alaska. Anchorage is just a pretty decent one. Number seven, Minneapolis, Minnesota. If you're into the idea of trading humidity for culture, Minneapolis is your place. This city offers an impressive array of cultural attractions, including the Walker Art Center and the Minneapolis Institute of Art. And with countless parks and lakes, you'll quickly forget about the palm trees and the sandy beaches. The main reason people move to Minneapolis is the healthcare and family. A lot of families live in the Minneapolis metro area. Maybe not downtown itself, but the surrounding cities, they're really great places to raise a family. And people like to be closer to their family as they get older. It's what we do. Sure, they have brutal winners, but like we've already established, some people don't mind. Just my personal opinion without any real stats, I would say about 25% of the population hates living places where they really don't have a serious change in the seasons. Any type of weather can wear you down no matter what type of weather it is, if it stays too long. 
But people move to Minneapolis for a whole bunch of reasons. Like I said, family, cost of living is low, great health care. They have a livability score of 78. About 10.7% of Minneapolis population is 65 years or older. Minneapolis, along with the surrounding area, has about 30 to 40 retirement communities. The average home value is $328,000. Number six, Louisville, Kentucky. For retirement with a side of bourbon, Louisville is the place to be. You could spend your golden years sipping the finest spirits, enjoying the famed Kentucky Derby, and indulging in some of the best Southern cuisine around. Just think about the stories you'll have to share over a glass of Kentucky's finest. If you don't know, Kentucky makes some of the best bourbon in the world. Again, Kentucky is a place that has really good health care, and a lot of it is around the Louisville area, or Louisville. Just so you know, if you're not from there and you ever do move there, you call it Louisville or Louisville. Uh, the locals are going to look at you side-eyed. Some of them like it because then they know you're not from there. We don't talk enough about Kentucky cities or the state of Kentucky on this channel. I'm really starting to warm up to it a little bit. They're really doing some good things. I just briefly read an article while I was on uh, waiting for a flight the other day about how their state government is one of the most, uh, they're getting along better than most other state governments. Both sides of the both parties. They're getting stuff done for the people. I'm not there. I'm not living in Louisville. I hope that's how it is. That being said, the livability score in Louisville, Kentucky is 68. Not the highest on this list, but it's pretty good. About 15.6% of Louisville's population is over the age of 65. They have about 30 to 40 retirement communities. And the average home goes for about $243,000. So it's affordable. They do get patches of rough weather, but nothing as bad as Fargo or Minneapolis. Number five, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Steel City may not have palm trees, but it does have a rich history and a thriving cultural scene. They also have some pretty good beer. From its renowned universities and hospitals to its beautiful riverside views and sports fanaticism. Yes, if you are a sports fan, move to Pittsburgh. These people lose it for their, the baseball team, the Pirates, the Steelers, their football team, and the Penguins, which is in the NHL. I want to go see a University of Pittsburgh game, Pitt. I want to see it there and their stadium. I've always have. In the last, I would say, five to ten years, Pittsburgh has become more and more popular, not just with retirees, with younger people. It's affordable. Homes are affordable. It's not terribly bad when it comes to crime or bad neighborhoods. And I'm comparing that to other cities in the United States. Every time I mention that, someone's going to go, no, it's so much worse now. Okay, every city's worse to someone than it used to be. That's what time does. Prices rise. Crime rises. Buildings get worn down. That's how the world works. Every few decades, they have a rebirth. Things get a little bit better in most cases. But Pittsburgh is a perfect example of a city that's on the rise. They have a livability score of 84. There's about 16.5% of Pittsburgh's population being 65 or older. Pittsburgh has around 40 to 50 retirement communities, and the average home goes for about $239,000. That is not bad. I could not live there. I'm a Cleveland Browns fan, and I believe it is illegal for me to live in Pittsburgh. Number four, Omaha, Nebraska. For a retirement that's more field of dreams than Golden Girls, consider Omaha. Known for its friendly residence and surprisingly lively art scene, Omaha offers the charm of the Midwest without the tourist traps. That's the truth. It's a good place to live, but they're really not drawn in a bunch of tourists. They do have some things, but nothing major. The one thing that sticks out to me is the Henry Dorley Zoo. This is one of the best zoos in the country. Some people aren't into zoos. I am. I really enjoy them. They do a lot of research, and it's fun to go look at the animals. This is one of the best ones I've ever been to. Omaha is another city that's becoming more and more popular with the retirement crowd. The weather here isn't horrible, and it is affordable, so it's kind of like a happy medium. They have a livability score of 84. About 12.6% of Omaha's population is 65 years or older. They have 25 to 30 retirement communities. That's a lot. The average home here goes for about $286,000. Number three, Burlington, Vermont. Yep, we're heading north again to Burlington. You know, if you could retire in New England, 
you definitely saved some money or did pretty well for yourself. It's an expensive place to live, but it is beautiful. And again, this is one of those places that a lot of people will retire to to get closer to family. From 2011 to 2017, the retirement crowd was getting smaller in Burlington. And in 2018, it started coming back up slowly, nothing major, but it's coming back up. But if you like your retirement with a side of maple syrup and stunning autumn foliage, Burlington should be your first round draft pick. This is a charming city that offers a relaxed pace of life, gorgeous scenery, and a community that embraces outdoor activities year-round. And yes, there's a lot of people that would prefer a nice cozy coffee shop to a beach. Burlington is definitely one of those places that you gotta have some money to retire. This place is not cheap, but it is cute, it is charming, it's a nice place to live. Burlington has a livability score of 76. Around 13.4% of Burlington's population is 65 years or older. Burlington has about 10 to 15 retirement communities, and the average home value is about $526,000. Number two, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Albuquerque, you know, it's not the best city, but it is affordable and it is a major city. Trade in your flip-flops for hiking boots and head to Albuquerque. With its rich cultural heritage, vibrant art scene, and breathtaking mountains, this city offers a retirement filled with exploration and adventure. That's something I read off one of their websites. And with over 300 days of sunshine each year, you won't miss Florida's weather at all. I mean, there's next to no humidity. Sure, there's no palm trees and no beaches, but that ain't everyone's cup of tea. Albuquerque has a livability score of 76, and about 14.5% of Albuquerque's population is 65 years or older. The average home value is about $333,000. It's not bad. All right, before we get to number one, if you're thinking about moving to any one of these cities or really any city in the United States, there's a link for a website called Home and Money in the description area below. They can get you in touch with a real estate agent anywhere in the country. All right, on to number one. And number one, Boise, Idaho. Yep, Boise, Idaho. It's not just for 30-year-olds. It's for everyone. Boise is becoming more and more popular. It had a little bit of a lull, I would say, around 2020, 21. Maybe that had to do with the pandemic. I don't know. It just seemed to drop a little bit lower than other cities, but they're right back at it. Just pulling them in from far and wide. The California influx has slowed down. I mean, Californians are still moving to Boise and Idaho in general, but it's slowed down a little bit. They're starting to see more from Colorado, Washington, and the Great Plains area. But if your idea of a perfect retirement includes potatoes, you'll be in heaven in Boise. Not only does Boise offer a surprisingly mild climate, but it also has some of the most stunning natural landscapes in the country. Let's face it, everyone wants to know all they can about a place where potatoes outnumber the people. Boise, Idaho has a livability score of 84. I mean, they've got pretty good stats all the way across the board. Approximately 13.8% of Boise's population is 65 years or older. They have about 25 to 30 retirement communities, and the average home value is $491,000. That's not too far off of the national average. And it's an attractive place to live. So, I mean, there's places that suck that'll get you a house about the same price or more. If you like that video, you probably like one of the two being suggested to you right now. If not, here's the outro. Have a great day. Be nice to each other.